Whether you love the PlayStation Vita or not, you gotta admit one thing, the PlayStation Vita has an insanely good library of games. This handheld is very much alive in the year 2025. There was a total of 2,566 games created for the PlayStation Vita. While I would really recommend purchasing a PlayStation Vita and modding it, there is an emulator that goes by the name of Vita 3K where you could play these games in higher resolutions and faster frame rates. And let's face it, Vita 3K is a much cheaper alternative to purchasing a PlayStation Vita, a memory card, and some games. So this is for the people that already have Vita 3K installed on their PC and are wondering what games are actually playable on this emulator. Let's go over 10 games that are fully playable on Vita 3K. Street Fighter Cross Tekken is a crossover fighting game published by Capcom and was released in the year 2012 for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation Vita, and Windows PC. The game features characters from both the Street Fighter franchise and Namco's Tekken series. Each player selects two characters and face off against each other in duos. The game features multiplayer modes, a single player story mode with a plot revolving around a mysterious object called the Pandora. The game has sold over 1.9 million units with PlayStation 3, 360 and Steam included. The PlayStation Vita version has only sold around 13,000 units. Street Fighter Cross Tekken was a commercial failure. I'm still very sad we never got Tekken Cross Street Fighter. So hop on over to the Vita 3K emulator and run this game in glorious 4K. With Street Fighter Cross Tekken being the first game we're showcasing here, I want to truly show you guys the differences between it running on Vita 3K and an actual PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation Vita definitely has its limitations, with the screen resolution maximizing at 960 by 544 pixels. It is a night and day difference between Vita 3K and the PlayStation Vita hardware. Mortal Kombat, also known as Mortal Kombat 9, is a 2011 fighting game developed by NetherRealm Studios and published by Warner Bros. It is the ninth main installment in the Mortal Kombat series and a soft reboot of the franchise. The game was also released for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 systems in April of 2011, and a PlayStation Vita port was released in May 2012. The game's director, Ed Boon, described it as an altered retelling of the events of the first three Mortal Kombat games. The PlayStation Vita version is similar to the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions containing all the DLC characters. Mortal Kombat sold an estimated 240,000 units on the PlayStation Vita in North America, making it the fourth best-selling game on the platform in that region. The PlayStation Vita version of Mortal Kombat is probably my favorite version of the game. There is some graphical differences. The graphics are worse on this version, but this is the complete experience in the palm of your hands. And on Vita 3K, you could run this in 4K almost at 60 frames per second, so make sure to try Mortal Kombat. A Boy in His Blob is an amazingly crafted puzzle platformer developed by WayForward and published by Majesco Entertainment. This is a remake of the 1989 video game A Boy in His Blob Trouble in Lobolonia, which was originally developed by Imagineering for the NES. This remake was released in the year 2009 for the Wii, and Abstraction Games made the high definition port available for the Xbox One, PS4, for PlayStation Vita, Windows, OS X, and Linux in the year 2016. WayForward's director Sean Velasco, being a fan of the original NES title, expressed a desire to recreate and update the experience for current generation gamers, streamlining the NES title's gameplay mechanics to create a more forgiving experience. There is no sales data really available for this game, which is a shame because it probably means it didn't sell well. And if you guys have not played this amazingly crafted 2D platformer, make sure to check it out on Vita 3K. Escape Plan is a puzzle game developed by Funbits Interactive and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation Vita. It was originally released as a launch title for the system. It is a debut game from a new developer, Funbits Interactive, and is produced by Chris Miller. 
known for his previous work on Fat Princess. The game has black and white visuals and a very gruesome yet humorous tone. It was later released in 2013 for the PlayStation 4. Sony did not release comprehensive sales information for digital titles, but in February of 2012, Escape Plan's digital sales surpassed even popular retail releases on the PlayStation Store such as Uncharted Golden Abyss. Escape Plan was such a delightful game back when it released in 2012, not to mention it was at a much lower price of $9.99. No wonder it sold well with the high price prices of the PlayStation Vita and the proprietary memory cards, but I still feel like no one really talks about this game, so make sure to check this game out, Escape Plan on Vita 3K, it runs amazingly. Asphalt Injection is a racing game developed by Gameloft for the PlayStation Vita and Android and released in 2011 and 2012. It was the eighth major game in the Asphalt series and just like Asphalt 3D, it was published by Konami in Japan and Ubisoft worldwide. The game contains three main gameplay modes, the career mode, multiplayer mode, and the free play mode. The game did not receive good reviews. It has a 49 out of 100 meta score on Metacritic. This was a launch title for the PlayStation Vita alongside games like Uncharted Golden Abyss, Army Corps of Hell, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Hustle Kings, Unit 13, Mod Nation Racers, Escape Plan, Wipeout 2048, Little Deviants, so you can't really blame anyone for not purchasing this game at launch. It did not sell well, but if you were thinking of replaying this game or playing it for the first time, I would definitely recommend you do so. I think it's an underrated PlayStation Vita racing game. And on Vita 3K, it looks amazing. Attack on Titan is a 2016 hack and slash game developed by Omega Force and published by Koei Tecmo. It is based on the animated series Attack on Titan, which is an adaptation of Hajime Isayama's manga series of the same name. The game was first released in Japan for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita in February of 2016. Later in August of 2016, the game was released internationally alongside ports to Windows and Xbox One. The game's visuals matches that of the anime series and it features one player fighting multiple enemies. The 3D maneuvering gear can be used to ascend to high areas. Initially, only three characters can be selected, but as players progress through the story mode, seven other characters can be unlocked. The game retells key moments from the Attack on Titan manga, chapters 1 through 33. Attack on Titan is a very fun hack and slash game for the PlayStation Vita and it runs so damn good on Vita 3K. So make sure you check it out. Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z is an action role playing fighting game based on the Dragon Ball franchise. It was developed by Art Dink and published by Bandai Namco Games. The game features elements from the 2013 Dragon Ball Z film Battle of Gods, including the first appearance in a Dragon Ball video game of Goku's Super Saiyan God form, Beerus, and Whis. Battle of Z is a team fighting action title that lets up to eight players battle it out against one another. The game supports up to four players and cooperative play and lets players perform attacks together and heal one another. The game features more than 70 characters. By early 2014, the game had only sold approximately 270,000 units worldwide across all platforms, which is a terrible number for a Dragon Ball Z game. But it's very believable considering everyone was very mixed on this Dragon Ball game. The game received a 66 out of 100 as a meta score on Metacritic for the PlayStation Vita version. But this is the only Dragon Ball game you can play on the PlayStation Vita and it runs so good on Vita 3K. Freedom Wars is a 2014 action role playing game developed by Dimps and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation Vita. Set in a distant future where the majority of humankind is imprisoned in penal city states known as Panopticons which wage war against one another. The game involves players cooperating to fight enemies and contribute towards their Panopticon. The game was one of the most successful first party PlayStation Vita titles in Japan, achieving the second highest all time opening sales for 
Vita Software sold there. A remastered port published by Bandai Namco Entertainment titled Freedom Wars Remastered released on PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Microsoft Windows on January 10, 2025. The game is a third-person battle action game and features local and online multiplayer functionality, both cooperative and competitive, for up to eight players. The game features a grappling whip that the player can use to zip across the battlefield and pull giant enemies to the ground. In Japan, the game sold approximately 300,000 digital and physical copies combined within the first month. Freedom Wars is one of those PlayStation Vita titles that everyone talks about whenever you're talking about top 10 Vita games or top 20. Everyone always brings it up. And if you're thinking about playing this, you could definitely buy that remastered version. But on Vita 3K, you can play this game in 4K. So technically, this is the remastered version. Murumasa Rebirth. This is a revamped version of the 2009 Wii game titled Murumasa the Demon Blade. It was released for the PlayStation Vita in 2013. It is a 2D side scroll in action RPG. There are two playable characters, Momohime and Kisuke. According to VGCharts.com, this game has only sold 240,000 copies. The only way to play Muramasa Rebirth is on the PlayStation Vita. Unfortunately, this has not been ported to any other console or handheld, which is a shame because this is one of the best looking games Vanillaware has ever made. The game sits at a 78 out of 100 meta score on Metacritic. And while this game is known by many people in the gaming community, this game only sold a quarter of a million copies solidifying it as a hidden gem for the PlayStation Vita. So if you want to see why this is a cult classic game for the PlayStation Vita, make sure you check it out on Vita 3K. You could run this in 4K or, you know, support the developers by purchasing this physically for almost $90. Hint, hint, the developers will get none of that money. So play it on Vita 3K. Why not? Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X 2 HD Remaster for the PlayStation Vita. Now I know, I know, I'm kind of cheating here. This is technically two games, but I figure since this is the last entry in the 10 games, I might as well put in an HD collection for the PlayStation Vita, which contains two games. Two original PlayStation 2 games made by Square back in the early 2000s. Final Fantasy X from 2001 and Final Fantasy X 2 from 2000. 2003. This compilation of the two Final Fantasy games came to PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 3 in North America in the year 2014. It also came to PlayStation 4 in 2015, Windows in 2016, and Xbox One and Switch in 2019. This remaster came with a lot of enhancements to the graphical features. The water effects and the lighting were improved. Tweaks were made to the environmental geometry and texturing, and the PlayStation Vita version runs at 720 by 408 pixels. While the PlayStation Vita version probably runs the worst out of all the versions there are of this game, for some reason it has an 86 out of 100 meta score on Metacritic, so the highest score out of all the versions. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys here, the best version of this to play would probably be the Steam version on PC, but right next to that would be the PlayStation Vita version running through Vita 3K. You could play this game going up to 4K resolutions. Technically, this game on Vita 3K runs better than the PlayStation 3 and Nintendo Switch versions. That was 10 games you need to play on the Vita 3K PlayStation Vita emulator. Vita 3K has sure come a long way since it first launched, and a lot of the games that you would expect not to run well actually do run well now in 2025. And were you shocked about these games being on the list? This was a very fun list to put together and to film. What are you guys playing on Vita 3K? Are you guys going to try out any of the games I had on this list. And if this is successful, I will definitely be making more of these more often. What did you guys think of this list? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, take care and thank you for watching the video.